Voice of America VOA is a U.S. government-funded international radio broadcast source which serves as the United States federal government's official institution for non-military, external broadcasting, the largest U.S. international broadcaster. VOA produces digital, TV, and radio content in more than 40 languages which it distributes to affiliate stations around the globe. It is primarily viewed by foreign audiences, so VOA programming has an influence on public opinion abroad regarding the United States and its leaders. VOA was established in 1942, and the VOA Charter Public Laws 94-350 and 103-415 was signed into law in 1976 by President Gerald Ford. The Charter contains its mission to broadcast accurate, balanced, and comprehensive news and information to an international audience and it defines the legally mandated standards in the VOA Journalistic Code. VOA is headquartered in Washington, D.C. and overseen by the U.S. Agency for Global Media, an independent agency of the U.S. government. Funds are appropriated annually by Congress under the budget for embassies and consulates. In 2016, VOA broadcast an estimated 1,800 hours of radio and TV programming each week to approximately 236.6 million people worldwide with about 1,050 employees and a taxpayer funded annual budget of $218.5 million. Some commentators consider Voice of America to be a form of propaganda. The United States Department of Justice requested that RT register as a foreign agent under the Foreign Agents Registration Act, so Russia's Justice Ministry labeled Voice of America and Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty as foreign agents in December 2017. Topic. Current languages The Voice of America website had five English language broadcasts as of 2014 worldwide, Special English, Cambodia, Zimbabwe and Tibet. Additionally, the VOA website has versions in 42 foreign languages radio programs are marked with an asterisk, TV programs with a plus symbol. The number of languages varies according to the priorities of the United States government and the world situation. History. Topic. American private shortwave broadcasting before World War II Before World War II, all American shortwave stations were in private hands. Privately controlled shortwave networks included the National Broadcasting Company's International Network or White Network, which broadcast in six languages, the Columbia Broadcasting System's Latin American International Network, which consisted of 64 stations located in 18 different countries, and the Crosley Broadcasting Corporation in Cincinnati, Ohio, all of which had shortwave transmitters. Experimental programming began in the 1930s, but there were fewer than 12 transmitters in operation. In 1939, the Federal Communications Commission set the following policy. A licensee of an international broadcast station shall render only an international broadcast service which will reflect the culture of this country and which will promote international goodwill, understanding and cooperation. Any program solely intended for, and directed to an audience in the continental United States does not meet the requirements for this service. This policy was intended to enforce the State Department's good neighbor policy, but some broadcasters felt that it was an attempt to direct censorship. Shortwave signals to Latin America were regarded as vital to counter Nazi propaganda around 1940. Initially, the Office of Coordination of Information sent releases to each station, but this was seen as an inefficient means of transmitting news. The director of Latin American relations at the Columbia Broadcasting System was Edmund A. Chester, and he supervised the development of CBS's extensive La Cadena de las Americas radio network to improve broadcasting to South America during the 1940s. Also included among the cultural diplomacy programming on the Columbia Broadcasting System was the musical show Viva America 1942-1949 which featured the Pan American Orchestra and the artistry of several noted musicians from both North and South America, including Alfredo Antonini, Juan Arvizu, Eva Garza, Elsa Miranda, Nestor Mesta Shares, Miguel Sandoval, John Seri Sr., and Turig Tucci. By 1945, broadcasts of the show were carried by 114 stations on CBS's La Cadena de las Americas network in 20 Latin American nations. 
These broadcasts proved to be highly successful in supporting President Franklin Roosevelt's policy of Pan-Americanism throughout South America during World War II. <laughs> World War II Even before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, the U.S. government's Office of the Coordinator of Information (COI) in Washington had already begun providing war news and commentary to the commercial American shortwave radio stations for use on a voluntary basis through its Foreign Information Service (FIS) in New York, headed by playwright Robert E. Sherwood, the playwright who served as President Roosevelt's speech writer and information advisor. Direct programming began a week after the United States' entry into World War II in December 1941, with the first broadcast from the San Francisco office of the FIS via a leased General Electric's transmitter to the Philippines in English other languages followed. Next step was the live broadcast to Germany, which was called Stimmen aus America, Voices from America, and was transmitted on February 1, 1942. It was introduced by the Battle Hymn of the Republic and included the pledge, "...today, and every day from now on, we will be with you from America to talk about the war. The news may be good or bad for us, we will always tell you the truth." Roosevelt approved this broadcast, which then Colonel William J. Donovan and Sherwood had recommended to him. It was Sherwood who actually coined the term, "...the voice of America." to describe the shortwave network that began its transmissions on February 1st from 270 Madison Avenue in New York City the office of war information when organized in the middle of 1942 officially took over voa's operations voa reached an agreement with the british broadcasting corporation to share medium wave transmitters in britain and expanded into tunis in north africa and palermo and bari italy as the allies captured these territories the OWI also set up the American Broadcasting Station in Europe. Asian transmissions started with one transmitter in California in 1941. Services were expanded by adding transmitters in Hawaii and, after recapture, the Philippines. By the end of the war, VOA had 39 transmitters and provided service in 40 languages. Programming was broadcast from production centers in New York and San Francisco, with more than 1,000 programs originating from New York. Programming consisted of music, news, commentary, and relays of U.S. domestic programming, in addition to specialized VOA programming. About half of VOA's services, including the Arabic service, were discontinued in 1945. In late 1945, VOA was transferred to the Department of State. Topic: Cold War. In 1947, VOA started broadcasting to the Soviet citizens in Russia under the pretext of countering more harmful instances of Soviet propaganda directed against American leaders and policies on the part of the internal Soviet Russian language media, according to John B. Witten's treatise, Cold War Propaganda. The Soviet Union responded by initiating electronic jamming of VOA broadcasts on April 24, 1949. Charles W. Thayer headed VOA in 1948-49. Over the next few years, the U.S. government debated the best role of Voice of America. The decision was made to use VOA broadcasts as a part of its foreign policy to fight the propaganda of the Soviet Union and other countries. The Arabic service resumed on January 1, 1950, with a half-hour program. This program grew to 14.5 hours daily during the Suez Crisis of 1956, and was six hours a day by 1958. In 1952, Voice of America installed a studio and relay facility aboard a converted U.S. Coast Guard cutter renamed Courier whose target audience was Soviet Union and other members of Warsaw Pact. The courier was originally intended to become the first in a fleet of mobile, radio broadcasting ships see offshore radio that built upon U.S. Navy experience during World War II in using warships as floating broadcasting stations. However, the courier eventually dropped anchor off the island of Rhodes, Greece with permission of the Greek government to avoid being branded as a pirate radio broadcasting ship. This VOA offshore station stayed on the air until the 1960s when facilities were eventually provided on land. The courier supplied training to engineers who later worked on several of the European commercial offshore broadcasting stations of the 1950s and 1960s. 
Control of VOA passed from the State Department to the U.S. Information Agency when the latter was established in 1953, to transmit worldwide, including to the countries behind the Iron Curtain and to the People's Republic of China PRC. Starting in the 1950s, VOA broadcast American jazz, with Willis Conover hosting a daily program from 1955 until 1996, which was highly popular worldwide drawing 30 million listeners at its peak. A program aimed at South Africa in 1956 broadcast two hours nightly, and special programs such as the Newport Jazz Festival were also transmitted. This was done in association with tours by U.S. musicians, such as Dizzy Gillespie, Louis Armstrong, and Duke Ellington, sponsored by the State Department. Throughout the Cold War, many of the targeted countries' governments sponsored jamming of VOA broadcasts, which sometimes led critics to question the broadcast's actual impact. For example, in 1956, Polish People's Republic stopped jamming VOA transmissions, but People's Republic of Bulgaria continued to jam the signal through the 1970s. Chinese-language VOA broadcasts were jammed beginning in 1956 and extending through 1976. However, after the collapse of the Warsaw Pact and the Soviet Union, interviews with participants in anti-Soviet movements verified the effectiveness of VOA broadcasts in transmitting information to socialist societies. The People's Republic of China diligently jams VOA broadcasts. Cuba has also been reported to interfere with VOA satellite transmissions to Iran from its Russian-built transmission site at Bajukal. David Jackson, former director of Voice of America, noted, The North Korean government doesn't jam us, but they try to keep people from listening through intimidation or worse. But people figure out ways to listen despite the odds. They're very resourceful. Throughout the 1960s and 1970s, VOA covered some of the era's most important news, including Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech and Neil Armstrong's first walk on the moon. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, VOA broadcast around the clock in Spanish. In the early 1980s, VOA began a $1.3 billion rebuilding program to improve broadcast with better technical capabilities. Also in the 1980s, VOA also added a television service, as well as special regional programs to Cuba, Radio Marti and TV Marti. Cuba has consistently attempted to jam such broadcasts and has vociferously protested U.S. broadcasts directed at Cuba. In September 1980, VOA started broadcasting to Afghanistan in Dari and in Pashto in 1982. At the same time, VOA started to broadcast U.S. government editorials, clearly separated from the programming by audio cues. In 1985, VOA Europe was created as a special service in English that was relayed via satellite to AM, FM, and cable affiliates throughout Europe. With a contemporary format including live disc jockeys, the network presented top musical hits as well as VOA news and features of local interest, such as Eurofax. 24 hours a day. VOA Europe was closed down without advance public notice in January 1997 as a cost-cutting measure. It was followed by VOA Express, which from July 4, 1999 revamped into VOA Music Mix. Since November 1, 2014 stations are offered VOA One, which is a rebranding of VOA Music Mix. In 1989, Voice of America expanded its Mandarin and Cantonese programming to reach the millions of Chinese and inform the country, accurately about the pro-democracy movement within the country, including the demonstration in Tiananmen Square. Starting in 1990, the U.S. consolidated its international broadcasting efforts, with the establishment of the Bureau of Broadcasting. Post-Cold War With the breakup of the Soviet bloc in Eastern Europe, VOA added many additional language services to reach those areas. This decade was marked by the additions of Tibetan, Kurdish to Iran and Iraq, Croatian, Serbian, Bosnian, Macedonian, and Rwanda Rundi language services. In 1993, the Clinton administration advised cutting funding for Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty as it was felt post-Cold War information and influence was not needed in Europe. This plan was not well received, and he then proposed the compromise of the International Broadcasting Act. The Broadcasting Board of Governors was established and took control from the Board for International Broadcasters which previously oversaw funding for RFE, RL. In 1994, President Clinton signed the International Broadcasting Act into law. 
This law established the International Broadcasting Bureau as a part of the U.S. Information Agency and created the Broadcasting Board of Governors with oversight authority. In 1998, the Foreign Affairs Reform and Restructuring Act was signed into law and mandated that BBG become an independent federal agency as of October 1, 1999. This act also abolished the USIA and merged most of its functions with those of the State Department. In 1994, Voice of America became the first broadcast news organization to offer continuously updated programs on the Internet. Cuts in services The Arabic service was abolished in 2002 and replaced by a new radio service, called the Middle East Radio Network or Radio Sawa, with an initial budget of $22 million. Radio Sawa offered mostly Western and Middle Eastern popular songs with periodic brief news bulletins. In May 16, 2004, WorldNet, a satellite television service, was merged into the VOA network. Radio programs in Russian ended in July 2008. In September 2008, VOA eliminated the Hindi language service after 53 years. Broadcasts in Ukrainian, Serbian, Macedonian and Bosnian also ended. These reductions were part of American efforts to concentrate more resources to broadcast to the Muslim world. In September 2010, VOA started radio broadcasts in Sudan. As U.S. interests in South Sudan have grown, there is a desire to provide people with free information. In 2013, VOA finished foreign language transmissions on shortwave and medium wave to Albania, Georgia, Iran and Latin America, as well as English language broadcasts to the Middle East and Afghanistan. The movement was done due to budget cuts. On July 1, 2014, VOA cut most of its shortwave transmissions in English to Asia. Shortwave broadcasts in Azerbaijani, Bengali, Khmer, Kurdish, Lao, and Uzbek were dropped too. On August 11, 2014, the Greek service ended after 72 years on air. Topic. List of languages Topic. List of directors 1941-1942 Robert E. Sherwood Foreign Information Service 1942-1943 John Houseman 1943-1945 Louis G. Cowan 1945-1946 John Ogilvie 1948-1949 Charles W. Thayer 1949-1952 Foy D. Kohler 1952–1953 Alfred H. Morton 1953–1954 Leonard Erickson 1954–1956 John R. Popple 1956–1958 Robert E. Burton 1958–1965 Henry Loomis 1965–1967 John Chancellor 1967–1968 John Charles Daly 1969–1977 Kenneth R. Giddens 1977–1979 R. Peter Strauss 1980–1981 Mary Bitterman 1981–1982 James B. Conkling 1982 John Hughes 1982–1984 Kenneth Tomlinson 1985 Jean Pell 1986 to 1991 Dick Carlson 1991 to 1993 Chase Untermeyer 1994 to 1996 Jeffrey Cowan 1997 to 1999 Evelyn S Lieberman 1999 to 2001 Sanford J Unger 2001 2002 Robert R Riley 2002–2006 David S. Jackson 2006–2011 Danforth W. Austin 2011–2015 David Ensor 2016 Amanda Bennett Topic. Agencies Voice of America has been a part of several agencies. From its founding in 1942 to 1945, it was part of the Office of War Information, and then from 1945 to 1953 as a function of the State Department. 
VOA was placed under the U.S. Information Agency in 1953. When the USIA was abolished in 1999, VOA was placed under the Broadcasting Board of Governors, or BBG, which is an autonomous U.S. government agency, with bipartisan membership. The Secretary of State has a seat on the BBG. The BBG was established as a buffer to protect VOA and other U.S.-sponsored, non-military, international broadcasters from political interference. It replaced the Board for International Broadcasting BIB that oversaw the funding and operation of Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, a branch of VOA. Laws Smith-Munt Act From 1948 until its repeal in 2013, Voice of America was forbidden to broadcast directly to American citizens under Section 501 of the Smith-Munt Act. The Act was repealed as a result of the passing of the Smith-Munt Modernization Act provision of the National Defense Authorization Act for 2013. The intent of the legislation in 1948 was to protect the American public from propaganda actions by their own government. Topic. Internal policies Topic. VOA Charter Under the Eisenhower administration in 1959, VOA Director Henry Loomis commissioned a formal statement of principles to protect the integrity of VOA programming and define the organization's mission, and was issued by Director George V. Allen as a directive in 1960 and was endorsed in 1962 by USIA Director Edward R. Murrow. The principles were signed into law on July 12, 1976, by President Gerald Ford. It reads, the long-range interests of the United States are served by communicating directly with the peoples of the world by radio. To be effective, the voice of America must win the attention and respect of listeners. These principles will therefore govern Voice of America VOA broadcasts. 1. VOA will serve as a consistently reliable and authoritative source of news. VOA news will be accurate, objective, and comprehensive. 2. VOA will represent America, not any single segment of American society, and will therefore present a balanced and comprehensive projection of significant American thought and institutions. 3. VOA will present the policies of the United States clearly and effectively, and will also present responsible discussions and opinion on these policies. Two-source rule According to former VOA correspondent Alan Heil, the internal policy of VOA News is that any story broadcast must have two independently corroborating sources or have a staff correspondent actually witness an event. <laughs> <laughs> Newsroom Voice of America's Central Newsroom has hundreds of journalists and dozens of full-time domestic and overseas correspondents, who are employees of the U.S. government or paid contractors. They are augmented by hundreds of contract correspondents and stringers throughout the world, who file in English or in one of VOA's other radio and television broadcast languages. In late 2005, VOA shifted some of its central news operation to Hong Kong where contracted writers worked from a virtual Office with counterparts on the overnight shift in Washington, D.C., but this operation was shut down in early 2008. Topic. Shortwave frequencies By December 2014, the number of transmitters and frequencies used by VOA had been greatly reduced. VOA still uses shortwave transmissions to cover some areas of Africa and Asia. Shortwave broadcasts still take place in these languages, Afana Romoo, Amharic, Bambara, Cantonese, Chinese, English, Indonesian, Korean and Swahili. VOA Radiogram VOA Radiogram was an experimental Voice of America program starting in March 2013 which transmitted digital text and images via shortwave radiograms. There were 220 editions of the program, transmitted each weekend from the Edward R. Murrow transmitting station. 
The audio tones that comprised the bulk of each 30-minute program were transmitted via an analog transmitter, and could be decoded using a basic AM shortwave receiver with freely downloadable software of the FLDigi family. This software is available for Windows, Apple, OS X, Linux, and FreeBSD systems. Broadcasts can also be decoded using the free Tivar app from the Google Play Store using any Android device. The mode used most often on VOA radiogram, for both text and images, was MFSK32, but other modes were also occasionally transmitted. The final edition of VOA radiogram was transmitted during the weekend of June 17-18, 2017, a week before the retirement of the program producer from VOA. An offer to continue the broadcasts on a contract basis was declined, so a follow-on show called Shortwave Radiogram began transmission on June 25, 2017 from the WRMI transmitting site in Okeechobee, Florida. Topic shortwave Radiogram Program Schedule Topic Transmission Facilities One of VOA's radio transmitter facilities was originally based on a 625-acre site in Union Township, now West Chester Township in Butler County, Ohio, near Cincinnati. The site is now a recreational park with a lake, lodge, dog park, and Voice of America Museum. The Bethany Relay Station operated from 1944 to 1994. Other former sites include California, Dixon, Delano, Hawaii, Okinawa, Monrovia, Liberia, Costa Rica, Belize, and at least two in Greece. Currently, VOA and the IBB continue to operate shortwave radio transmitters and antenna farms at International Broadcasting Bureau Greenville Transmitting Station in the United States, close to Greenville, North Carolina, Site B. They do not use FCC issued call signs, since they are overseen by the NTIA, which is the federal government equivalent of the FCC which regulates state government and public and private communications and they operate under different rules. The IBB also operates a transmission facility on Sao Tome and Tineng Concepcion, Tarlac, Philippines for VOA. Topic comparing VOA RFE RL ERM to other broadcasters In 1996, the U.S.'s international radio output consisted of 992 hours per week by VOA, 667 by Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, and 162 by Radio Marty. Topic controversy topic Mullah Omar interview In late September 2001, VOA aired a report that contained brief excerpts of an interview with then-Taliban leader Mullah Omar Muhammad, along with segments from President Bush's post-9-11 speech to Congress, an expert in Islam from Georgetown University, and comments by the Foreign Minister of Afghanistan's anti-Taliban Northern Alliance. State Department officials including Richard Armitage and others argued that the report amounted to giving terrorists a platform to express their views. In response, reporters and editors argued for the VOA's editorial independence from its governors. VOA received praise from press organizations for its protests, and the following year in 2002, it won the University of Oregon's Payne Award for Ethics in Journalism. Topic Abdul Malik Rigi interview On April 2, 2007, Abdul Malik Rigi, the leader of Junjula, a terrorist militant group with possible links to Al-Qaeda, appeared on Voice of America's Persian service. VOA introduced Rigi as the leader of popular Iranian resistance movement. The interview resulted in public condemnation by the Iranian-American community, as well as the Iranian government. Junjula is a Sunni Islamist militant organization that has been linked to numerous attacks on civilians, such as the 2009 Zahedan explosion. Topic Tibetan protester interview In February 2013, a documentary released by China Central Television interviewed a Tibetan self-immolator who failed to kill himself. The interviewee said he was motivated by Voice of America's broadcasts of commemorations of people who committed suicide in political self-immolation. VOA denied any allegations of instigating self-immolations and demanded that the Chinese station retract its report. Topic Trump presidency concerns After the inauguration of U.S. President Donald Trump, several tweets by Voice of America one of which was later removed seemed to support the widely criticized statements by White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer about the crowd size and biased media coverage. This first raised concerns over possible attempts by Trump to politicize the state-funded agency. 
This amplified already growing propaganda concerns over the provisions in the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2017, signed into law by Barack Obama, which replaced the board of the Broadcasting Board of Governors with a CEO appointed by the President and to allow the VOA to broadcast to American audiences. Trump sent two of his political aides, Matthew Sipilowski and Matthew Shuck, to the agency to aid its current CEO in the transition to the Trump administration. Criticism was raised over Trump's choice of aides. Shuck was a staff writer for right wing website The Daily Surge until April 2015, while Sipilowski was a field director at the conservative advocacy group Americans for Prosperity. VOA officials responded with assurances that they would not become Trump TV. BBG head John F. Lansing told NPR that it would be illegal for the administration to tell VOA what to broadcast, while VOA director Amanda Bennett stressed that while government funded the agency is not government run topic <inaudible> guo wengi interview on april 19 2017 voa interviewed the chinese real estate tycoon guo wengi in a live broadcast the whole interview was scheduled for 3 hours after Guo Weigi alleged to own evidence of corruption among the members of the Politburo Standing Committee of China, the highest political authority of China, the interview was abruptly cut off, after only one hour and 17 minutes of broadcasting. Guo's allegations involved Fu Zhenhua and Wang Kishan, the latter being a member of the Politburo Standing Committee and the leader of the massive anti-graft movement. It was reported that Beijing warned VOA's representatives not to interview Guo for his unsubstantiated allegations." Four members of the U.S. Congress requested the Office of Inspector General to conduct an investigation into this interruption on August 27, 2017. See also International Broadcasting Alhora BBC World Service France 24 Propaganda in the United States Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty Radio Free Asia Russia Today TV Voice of America Indonesia VOA People Frank Shozo Baba Willis Conover George Cow References Bibliography Topic. External links Official website Voice of America Newscasts, Science Programs, Editorials Internet Archive